what constitutes an act of terrorism. Now, you could be quite literal about this and say that any uh, appalling act of violence on an individual or a property, etc., by definition is a terror-based act. Is it terrorism if you commit the act of murder, not legally defined as terrorism, but if you're on the receiving end of it, uh, you're related to somebody who is, you, you may well wish to define it like that. And then, of course, you get into the other, which sort of slightly lurks into media conspiracy, why is one person labelled a terrorist and another person isn't? Uh, and that gets us into the territory of how do you specifically ascertain what is an act of terror? Do you have to be a member or an associate of a prescribed terrorist group or organisation? Does your ideology have to be so defined in something we all broadly find nefarious that it's inescapably terrorist-related? For example, and this is rather interesting, so we had the attacks in Germany yesterday. That's been acknowledged as a terrorist attack from a right-wing supremacist, uh, as far as we know. Uh, we had an attack in a mosque yesterday in North London that hasn't been acknowledged as an act of terror. In fact, the police have said they're not treating it as an act of terror. We had London Bridge, act of terror. Murder of Joe Cox, not an act of terror. Interestingly, murder of Lee Rigby, not an act of terror. People assume that it might have been because they feel that those responsible were clearly making all the right noises, but the people concerned were not tried under terrorism laws but were tried as murderers. So it does move around, despite what people think. And when I hear people say, well, it's only people of colour that you hear described as terrorists, I think the multiple decades of reporting on the IRA will show that, in fact, uh, white people are certainly not immune from being described as terrorists on a regular basis. Uh, let's get more into this. Uh, let's speak to Dr David Lowe um, on this and a few other connected points as well. David, good afternoon to you. You are, good of course, for those who don't know, Senior Research Fellow at Leeds Beckett University Law School, researching terrorism and security. It's a wide old phrase, isn't it? And my sense as well is that it's kind of moved around over the years. Yeah, I think the, the, the way to look at uh, what defines an act of terrorism, I suppose, coming from the law school and with my uh, previous background in the criminal justice system, mm. we go to Section 1 of the Terrorism Act and that gives you the definition. And that's what investigators work from. That's what the CPS would look at. And that's, so that would be important in any subsequent trials. And basically, you know, as you were alluding to there, it's where they do either to influence the government or to intimidate the public or section of the public. Uh, and it's going to be for advancing political, religious or an ideological cause is what you were saying, causing serious damage to, uh, causing serious injury, mm. uh, serious violence against people and so on. So there's a, uh, some activities there, and that's what they would look at. Uh, and that really is, determines an act of terrorism. And I thought it was interesting here when you're talking about Thomas Mayer, and we could put Darren Osborne uh, into that one. He was the Finsbury Park yeah, in yeah. 2017. And that was an act of um, terrorism. Yeah, and now you look at murder, uh, most... Uh, most um, uh, trials where there's been a, a, a death. It has to be murder because you can't get any more serious than murder in, our, in, in criminal law. But what looked at Thomas Mayer and uh, Adabalodi and Adamalaja was the sentencing factors and because they were using a political cause that increased the sentencing tariff and that's what the judge would have done. So I hope that sort of helps explain why perhaps they weren't looked as terrorist incidents per se. What about the murder of Joe Cox? Because you would look at that and think, I mean, certainly Brenda and her husband after the court case described it as an act of terrorism and, yeah. and, and that's understandable that he would say that and many of us viewed it and so well, it, it certainly appeared to have the hallmarks of that. But again, this wasn't tried under terrorism laws. This was an act of murder. Yeah, and I think what, what they then looked at was uh, obviously the background and, and during the evidence that was produced was uh, the Nazi paraphernalia that uh, Thomas Mayer had, uh, what was influencing, what he'd been looking at on the internet. And that was a sentencing factor because at the end of the, uh, once, once he was found guilty, uh, the, the judge then looked at the evidence there and saw that as a sentencing factor because he was acting from a political uh, or ideological cause. So... Uh, as I said, it, it, it may sound um, complicated or, or certainly a paradox to some some listeners, but as I said, it was murder, but then they will look at that sensing factor, and as a result, Thomas Murray got a long tariff uh, for when he was sentenced. Indeed. And, and, and has the definition changed to, to um, encompass... 
maybe, and to understand uh, contemporary sensitivities. And I, the, one of the things that struck me, and I'm slightly sticking my neck out here, David, you might shoot me down in flames and say, no, I've got this horribly wrong. I'm thinking of what happened in Christchurch in New Zealand when the yeah. man attacked the, the mosque and filmed this grisly massacre uh, of many innocent worshippers on that day. Now, that, of course, was a clear act of terrorism. I'm just wondering if that had happened 20 years ago, would that have been called terrorism? Um, if we were, because we've got to look at the act, so uh, the, the Terrorism Act 2000, might not have, it might not have been because we have, all we have in the UK here was the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Of course, you mentioned uh, Ireland or Northern Ireland and the mm. Troubles, um, which was about, I think, if I remember, when I said, because you obviously had to use it when I was in the police, I think it was only about 30 sections, and it was a really small piece of legislation. <laughs> obviously primarily deemed, and I remember that bit, it was dealing with uh, IRA and any breakaway group from the IRA and the loyalist groups. And um, it was, it, you know, it, it, it was very compact. And then you can, when you look at the raft of terrorist legislation that's come after that from 2000, has been enormous. Uh, so it might not have been, uh, because it just looked a, a, a political cause. Now we've got political, yeah. religious, ideological, or racial cause. So... That, that's the difference. Those are four grounds there that you can look at. Yeah, I just... Totally political uh, before. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to say, I kind of wonder whether, you know, we would have described that as a horrendous massacre and a mass killing and all of that. And again, similarly, if you're, if you're a serial killer and you've carried out an act against, I don't know, you've, you've specifically killed young men um, for whatever reason... Uh, because you don't like young men, you have a problem with the, the male uh, existence. Um, is that seen as... Is that an act of terrorism, if you've done that? If you went and started culling people because you don't like something about them? Where does... Well where does the where does the terrorism definition fit in? If it's about an ideology, how do we define an ideology? It would be the evidence that you gather there. I mean, let's say that they have a thing against um, young men. I mean, so what you'd look at, well, is this homophobia? Well, it might be heterosexual young men. Yeah. It's, so you, 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 as an investigator, you've got to break down and look, well, what's, what's the, the rationale behind this individual? committing that crime and then looking at well, uh, certainly in today what are they looking at on the internet who are they communicating with looking at trying to get some connection somewhere but otherwise then you would have uh, as we had say with the Yorkshire Ripper a serial killer yeah. as someone who has something against prostitutes which was uh, which is what the Yorkshire Ripper of was. course but we wouldn't call but, him a terrorist we wouldn't no, even people, think of that's well, of course, it would still be a serious tariff, mostly never, never really effectively get released. Indeed. Um, you know, and would we have one or two individuals like that who are in prison because of the nature of the crime they did and, of course, yep. the enormity of that crime and the number of victims. So, yes, it's not an act of terror, but a very, very serious crime nevertheless and a very serious sentence that will be handed down. And it, so in broad brush terms, just to conclude, David... Um subscribing or ascribing to a, a certain ideology stroke group stroke organization does that more or less define what a terrorist act is yes uh, i mean you know we, you were talking uh, before about you know the number of prisoners i think we've got uh, roughly around 38 prisoners who are neo-nazis who uh, have been associated with national action who now prescribe group and scottish dawn ns 131 yeah. they are three extreme far-right groups neo-nazis who've been prescribed i mean uh, you know one one of them last year was jack renshaw plotting to kill mm -hmm. an mp and the police officer investigating them so you know these these are still and, and i mentioned that because of the link with what happened in germany last night yeah. um and it's interesting to see that uh, the, the German interior minister from last night is now saying that the threat from the neo-Nazis, the extreme far right, is at a very high level. What we would call, I would say, severe. It's highly likely. Uh, but it's not just Germany. It's not just the UK. Sure. We, as you said, you, you mentioned Christchurch, Ian. We've seen attacks in the US. The threat from, from, from the extreme far right, the, the neo-Nazis, is real, and they're linking together. There's a group called Atomwaffen in, uh, in, in the US, and they are linking to the, and I know this, this says they're all German names, but Sonnenkrieg Division here is a new one that's been formed. They communicate with Atom Wappen, uh, Firecrieg Division in Europe. They're all linked and they're all supporting each other uh, through communications. And they are extremely violent. They incite violence. They're, they're, they're unashamedly neo-Nazis. They hate everybody apart from themselves. And they, this is a threat. So I, th I think it's interesting. We, 
we have to look in the UK. We have not just an Islamist-inspired threat. We have a rise in uh, the neo-Nazis. And, of course, you mentioned, Darren, that's still not gone away. We've still yeah. got distant Republicans sure. and loyalists in Port Leisham and Gary Prison. On that point, David, it's always good to talk. Thank you, Dr David Lowe, Senior Research Fellow at Leeds Beckett University Law School. He researches terrorism and security. You may wish to concur or perhaps depart from his definition of what it is that uh, allows certain cases to be immediately defined as an act of terrorism and others, despite what it appears aren't.